aftermath of the big fire at Rongatai is a harvest of wet and charred wool. Assisted by machinery from the Public Works Department, more than a hundred men have taken temporary jobs here cleaning up. Many of the bales are only charred on the outside and more wool can be salvaged than was at first expected. Some of the wool has to be sent away to scouring plants, but much of it only needs drying, and acre by acre it is spread out across the Wellington scene. This work will mean a considerable reduction in the big insurance claim. On Saturday, the 5th of October, the rowing season was declared open by the Governor-General at the boathouse of Wellington Star Boating Club. Sir Bernard Freiburg attributed much of the quality of our armed forces to the New Zealanders' background of sport. Boisterous weather allowed only whale boats to be launched. For sheer enjoyment, Sir Bernard said, there's no better time in a man's life than when he's a first-class athlete at the top of his fall. To New Zealand today comes Aunt Daisy after her fourth visit to the United States where she spoke to women's organizations and broadcast over several networks. Radio was on the spot to record the return of their personality who has been known to listeners for 17 years. When Aunt Daisy got down to work again, she was ready to give weekly review some of her reactions to life abroad. Well, good morning, everybody. Here I am home again, back again in New Zealand, which is the very easiest country in the world to live in and work in at the present time, I can assure you of that. Well, I have a very happy duty to perform to bring to you the kindliest and friendliest greetings from the women in the homes of America, both the United States and Canada, all those thousands. The chief point of agreement, one in which every woman would like to take a part, is that we would like to, to get the world back to a normal, happy life, to get a real United Nations, to get happy homes, happy home life, family life. We know how, how delightful it always is having school picnics and school concerts and how that brings all the community together. Well, we want to get back to that again. Of course, I know that what's against it at the present time is the housing shortage, but that won't last forever. That's being coped with at present. There are new ideas, concrete houses and so on, prefabrication going on, and soon that will be overcome. And in America, I do assure you, it's far worse there than it is here, but they're coping with it too. And it really is tough over there. I remember one Saturday evening, a wet Saturday evening in New York, in a crowded milk bar, seeing a little toddler, he, he wouldn't be two years old, sitting up in one of those high stools and his mother feeding him with vegetables and gravy out of a bowl. She'd had to get it there. I suppose she had a room with no cooking conveniences. She was well dressed. She wasn't poor. So there was no family life about that, was there? Bringing up a little child that way. So the only thing we can do is to pull together, to study the questions, both sides, try to get a fair solution. New Zealanders like to be fair. That, that appeals to us. And each one must do her own part. Don't sit back and think that the big four and the big five and the big six can do everything. They will be influenced by what we think and what we do. And remember always that the great flame of victory will come from the spark of individual effort. So, kia ora, cheerio, everybody. <laughs> As the bus arrives at Mechanics Bay, Auckland, a flight stewardess on duty for the Tasman Empire Airways begins her working day. At 6 a.m. she reports to the flying boat base to make routine preparations before the takeoff at 8 o'clock. In the traffic office and control rooms, every detail for the day's trans-Tasman flight is checked over. The airways traffic officer computes the aircraft loading, and the flight stewardess notes the seating of passengers and receives her final instructions. Modern air transport is not reserved for businessmen and public officials only. Many families are now travelling by air, and one of the most important duties of a stewardess is to look after mothers and their children. The family are taken aboard, and as takeoff time approaches, passengers are made comfortable with rugs and magazines. Loaded with mail, 
Wells freight, her crew of six and 30 passengers, the powerful flying boat clears Auckland Harbour. Sydney is 1,300 miles away, and the work of the flight stewardess is just beginning. She checks the provisions that have been brought aboard for breakfast, teas and lunch. As the aircraft gains altitude, she sees that every passenger is made comfortable. Well on the way now, and luncheon is served. The flight stewardess has made an appetizing meal for passengers and crew. Every one of the six New Zealand girls who work as flight stewardesses for the Tasman Airways is well trained for her responsible job. The passengers are told of the progress of the flight. Soon they'll be in Sydney and the flight stewardess will have completed another successful peacetime mission.